And now we continue our politics coverage. And as Rick just mentioned, a Texas special election for a Democratic seat could flip due to the GOP putting manpower and money into capturing the attention of Latino voters in the state. Our Maria Villarreal traveled to Uvalde just days before the Robb Elementary shooting to speak to the GOP members who are implementing grassroots efforts to attract Latino voters and elevate some Latino candidates. Along the South Texas border, the Rio Grande River, rough, and unpredictable has become an unintended battleground for one of the country's most polarizing issues, immigration. Politicians, both Republican and Democrat, working through the river's unpredictable current to excite and incite potential voters. Title 42, a health policy used by the Trump administration during the pandemic to slow the flow of migrants, was set to expire on May 23rd. But Republican governors from around the country sued the Department of Homeland Security, fighting to keep the policy in place. They argued getting rid of it could open the floodgates to a massive influx of migrants. Well, the good news is that a court very correctly ruled that Title 42 should not be lifted, which is a good thing. However, it's only a temporary result. Conservative leaders celebrating after a judge granted an injunction, keeping the policy in place until a compromise was agreed on. The federal government vowing to appeal the decision. The ruling has not stopped large groups from crossing into Texas. In Eagle Pass, there really isn't a true bus station, so these migrants all get together at a convenience store. They wait for the bus. There's only a few that come through here every day. They hop on here. They head to San Antonio. And then from there, they go out of state. De que país es? Venezuela. Oswaldo asked us not to show his face or use his full name out of fear. He left his home country of Venezuela, he says, to escape the danger and corruption perpetuated by the country's government and military. He crossed the Rio Grande River into the U.S. near Del Rio, Texas, where the waters are low enough to walk through. So he said that this particular area is easier for them and safer for them to cross. And when I asked if they paid anybody, no pagasa también. If he paid anybody, like a, a smuggler, he said, he said no, that he used Google Maps. It actually worked very well for him. This group will head to San Antonio, and most will leave the state to meet up with relatives while their asylum cases wade through the federal court system. But there are other groups apprehended and processed by Border Patrol that end up in small towns like Uvalde, Texas, just outside San Antonio. So despite Title 42 in place, they are still permitted to stay. With a population of less than 20,000 people, the city's budget is small. And Mayor Don McLaughlin says they just don't have the means to take care of these people. I mean, we've dealt with immigration all our life down here. It's always been something we've always dealt with, but never, never like we've seen it now. Is anybody listening? to what you guys have to say? Yes, they come down and, and they tell us, oh, we're working on it and so forth, but we're not getting any resolve on it. We're, we're, we're really not. It's an issue newly elected state representative, Republican John Lujan is committed to changing. For Latinos, is immigration the biggest issue that you hear people wanting to talk about or is that just a small part of what concerns this demographic? I think it's a big part. When I, I had the privilege of going down to the border and just talking with friends around here, we're very, very upset about... See, I really believe that we need a strong immigration policy. We need immigrants. 100% we need them. We don't need it this way. We need the federal government to step up and say, here's the rules, here's how you come across, here's how we do it, and then everybody does it that way. But right now what we're doing is we're giving free play for the cartel. Luan's district has never before elected a Republican representative, and his race is quickly becoming a template for GOP candidates across the country. I knew it was a big deal, but I didn't think it was that big of a deal. And then I started getting all these invites at Latino leadership conferences, and can I talk to the conservative Latinos in El Paso and the Valley and Houston? And I always say yes. If I can go and I can clear my calendar, I want to go because I think it's that important. I, I think t the way Texas goes, the rest of the United States kind of watches and follows. And I might get some people mad, but I don't like career politicians. I think people need to live life, get experiences, know what's going on, and then say, okay, I want to get in the political game because I want to make a difference in our community. 
I think that's where, you know, you've got to write some paychecks. You've got to do some some living. It's a grassroots approach now shared by the Republican National Committee. In 2022, the RNC made a multi-million dollar commitment to attracting more Latino voters in key states. That includes opening community centers in predominantly Hispanic neighborhoods. The GOP focusing their efforts on younger voters and Latinos, preaching conservative values and common sense solutions to issues surrounding education, jobs, and the economy. It's a strategy that's working. Across South Texas, Republicans are seeing massive gains at the polls. In Starr County, voter turnout for Republicans up by more than 10,000 percent and raw votes climbing by more than 11,000 percent. Starr County Republican Party Chair Claudia Alcazar voted Democrat for most of her life but switched three years ago. Do you think that the efforts that are being made by the GOP party in South Texas specifically are working? Yes, because we're not, you know, people, I say we are not being ignored and taken for granted anymore. At least, you know what, the Republican Party is trying to recruit us and talk to us and say, you know what, you have a voice that matters. And that's what John is banking on. He's up for re-election in November and is confident more Latinos will hit the polls and vote Republican. You know what scares me is there's extremes coming both from the far right and the far left. It's that middle ground that we're really suffering and those two ends are pulling pulling us apart. And um, I tell you what, I, I'm looking forward, if I win this race, I'm gonna be working with really good Republicans. I'm gonna be working with really good Democrats. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.